a hero. Bling blow. She no skateboard tree. Bling blow. She no skateboard tree. Hi everybody, Cabbage Patchy tuning in today with another video. Um, <laughs> as you can tell, I dyed my hair. Um, I'm still going by my name, Cabbage Patchy, though, so that's still here to stay. So today, I'm going to be doing um, kind of a review, um, my journal entries on what I learned from the book The Plant Paradox and how it kind of blew my mind. So why is it called The Plant Paradox? Um, so it has been said that there are certain foods or vegetables and fruit for you that are actually bad for you and can cause certain diseases and weight gain. So let me break it down for you. I have all my notes here. I'm just going to be reading off my notes and telling you guys all the stuff I learned and it, it kind of opened my eyes, so to speak. <laughs> there are these things called lectins. What are lectins? Lectins is produced on some healthy foods as a defense mechanism that goes back to the dawns of time that is toxic for our health. So basically some seeds and plants want us to eat them so they can process through our GI tract that are encased in a hard coating. But for the naked babies, so to speak, that don't want to be eaten discourage transportation of seeds since the mother tree will most likely die off and want to be replaced. Another example, fruit trees want us to eat seeds so they fall to a further distance from the tree so they don't compete. You can get an idea of what fruit don't have as much lectins. Lectins are apparent when fruit and vegetables are ripened naturally. When taken from parts of the world and it is brought into stores, it is plucked unripe and given a blast of oxide when it arrives. Okay, so basically, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, it's talking about how some fruits and vegetables, some plants, they carry a defense mechanism called lectins that are basically to keep us away from eating them. And those lectins can actually cause um, a slow poisoning inside our system. And I'm gonna explain throughout this whole thing what that means and why it's so dangerous. Tips to avoid lectins and unnaturally ripe plants is to only eat locally grown produce at key times of the year. Lectins attach to ciliac acid and sugar molecules in the gut and in the brain. This is between nerve endings and joints and all bodily fluids, including blood vessels causing miscommunication and brain fog. This is saying that some people are more sensitive to lectins, causing infections or weight gain. It is said you are what you eat. How your food was raised, produce or poultry affects you, even the food and animal you ate if it had lectins. Organically grown fruit and veg contain more nutrients, minerals, but more importantly contain more polyphenols. Phenols. <laughs> gonna be bumpy. Oh, good evening, I got my water here. My mouth keeps drying up. Polyphenols, which are micronutrients packed with the antioxidants. It is said they can improve or treat digestion issues, weight, weight management, and much more. Here's a halfway quick tip throughout this whole thing. If you want to make a small but big difference, try avoiding omega-6 fats, which are an inflammatory, but omega-3 fats are anti-inflammatory. Moving back to lectins. We do have somewhat of a defense mechanism against lectins. Number one, mucus and saliva. Example, sweet and spicy foods, producing more when we eat these foods. Number two, Next is the stomach acid, which in many cases does the job for certain lectins, but not all of them in high amounts. Number three, you make a defense over time of eating the same lectins passed down from your dependent ancestors. Number four, a mucus through your intestines, a layer that protects your gut. But saying that, the more you eat, the more they add up. Number one, your intestine mucus also absorbs all other things that are considered small but not large, proteins, lectins all the time. You can, they can pry at the walls open by binding with zololine. High levels of zololine are the marker of impaired intestinal barrier. Number two, plants make lectins mimic other proteins in your body without knowing making the body attack its own proteins. The receptors tell our body to store the fat 
when they shouldn't be or tell white blood cells to attack our bodies. Number three, lectins block transmissions and hormonal signals giving wrong information. Uh, so yeah, if you're wondering what kind of foods are good then and which foods are bad, well, I'm not gonna tell you and write, read them all out because that's gonna take forever, but I think I'm gonna um, write them all below and so that you'll know which ones to avoid and which ones are good. And hopefully they're ones that you can still keep in your diet that you're like your favorite foods and stuff, or that you can just, just cut down on. But uh, I'm gonna get into more of that detailed stuff later on. Or I'm just gonna put a little picture right here because it might take too long to like put all, <laughs> write it all in. And I'm gonna say, so there'll be the, the good foods that I write down below and the bad foods and you can check that out. Okay, on to the next. Now, lots of plants give us the nutrients we need, but this book tells us about the right time to eat, prepare, and in the right amounts. I'll mention it again, but not everyone is as sensitive to lectins, depending on their ancestors and what they ate. Defen um, building defense mechanisms of eating the same foods throughout the years, depending where you lived in the world. But luckily, cooking can break down some lectins. Animals are more tolerant to lectins since they have been consistent with eating them with the same foods and building the fence over thousands of years. But there was a mutation in cows 2000 years ago from A1 to A2. This protein attaches to the pancreas insulin, producing beta cells which promote immune attack from people that drink from these cows. Southern Europe's cows, goats, sheep continue to produce A2 cows. Holstein, which is popular, contains lots of lectins. The type of cow you eat or drink from matters. Here are some foods that weren't introduced early on uh, that can make you more prone to lectins. Uh, make that peanuts, cashews, grains, um, pseudo grains, squash family, I'm running out of fingers, <laughs> um, and chai and certain seeds. With vast amounts of antibodies, drugs, and chemicals can also and have destroyed our gut bacteria, which could have educated our guts on how to process lectins. I'll mention a few antibiotics and artificial sweeteners. Stick this in your brain. Corn, soy, wheat are the most packed with lectins that are the most processed. Think of it this way. All the chemical overload from everything in modern day today has compromised your way to process grains, legumes, and other lectin plants. We eat far more wheat, we eat far more corn, and other grains, soybeans, and processed form. Plants aren't being fully grown, sprayed with pests, repellents, or without soil bacteria, leaving out zinc and magnesium that prevent diabetes and metabolic syndrome. Here are some fun facts and tips. Cut out white and brown flour from your diet. And here's something most people don't know um, that I think the government should really think about. Lectin heavy foods are the leading cause of diseases. Think about that, that's fucking crazy. Gluten free stuff still has lectins even if gluten is a lectin. Going gluten free can make you overweight. Also get rid of the defense against certain lectins. Food is an addiction. It matters what the animal you eat, eats. That makes sense? Using broad spectrum in antibiotics is dangerous. I'll get more into that. Now let's dive into WJA, or WEGA, just like I like to call it. Wheat germ agulitin. I think that's how it's pronounced. I'm not really sure. Uh, WJA is particularly smaller than other lectins and can pass through the wall intestines better than others. Whole grains has this, stay clear. Here are some facts on WJA. Number one, WJA behaves like insulin, pumping sugar into your fat cells, turning sugar into fat. Number two, blocking sugar from muscle cells, creating more body fat. Number three, interferes with digestion and pro of proteins. Number four, Promotes inflammation by releasing free radicals, which thin mucus lining and the gut, in the gut. Uh, number five, cross the blood brain barrier causing neurological problems. <laughs> uh, number seven, I'm on hands, so. <laughs> number six. 
Seven. Turn my big toes up. Kill cells without knowing normal cancerous cells. Number eight. Uh, interferes with replication of DNA. Number nine. Causes, I can't pronounce it, so we're just gonna get some help. Atherosclerosis. The buildup of fats and other substances and alt artery walls and hardening of arteries from buildup of plaque. Number 11. Wah, uh, uh. Contributes to the development of nephritis. Nephritis, I think that's how it's said. And kidneys become inflamed. So, you're probably wondering what the heck is this stuff? What am I learning? What is Wigan? Uh, so how do you stay clear of Wigan? Don't eat whole grain bread or other whole grain products. Say that again. Don't eat whole grain bread and other whole grain products. They're bad for you. I'll explain why in a short bit, but for now, we're just gonna throw in some facts and let you guys just think about that for a little bit. A smart tactic is to strip brown rice to white or just eating white rice. Taking certain, certain medications give short-term relief on your body, but they have harmful side effects on your gut, including aspirin, ibuprofen, naproxen, and ketoprofen are also known. Antibiotics are capable of killing multiple strains of bacteria, most types these days. Here's something to think about. I'm shouting out to all you mothers out there that are paranoid about their children. Every time a child takes an antibiotic, it is likelihood to develop Crohn's, diabetes, obesity, or asthma increase later in life. Taking antibiotics is like wiping out a rainforest. You may start fresh, but it how long does it take for it to grow back the good bacteria before it is taken out again by the same antibiotic? They can be life-saving, but be cautious about taking them for anything other than life-threatening infection. Almost all chicken and beef contain antibiotics to kill bacteria. And once the good bacteria is wiped out, the gang of bad guys take over. I'm shouting out to all you pregnant women right now. A single dose of antibiotics taken by a pregnant woman can make her child fat. <laughs> it's a fact. A single round given to a child can do the same. NSAIDs. NSAIDs break down your intestinal barrier causing pain, which causes you to take more bad painkillers. Stomach acid is also very important since the bad bacteria can't live there, never making it past the stomach. Senior citizens who are protein malnourished because their stomach acid can't break it down, sometimes they will eat too much. Here are some Trojan horses. Generic enemies, ibuprofen, Advil, Aleve, Nacrozoli, Celebrex, Mobic, NSAIDs. <laughs> Friendly substitutes, Boswellian, White Willow Bark. Acid reducer enemies, Zontac, Preosiac, Emoprazole, Protinix, Nixum, and number. Imprazol, Imprazol, Imprazol. I have it written down so you, you don't need to bully me or anything, please. Friendly subs, Rodens, also to DGL wafers. Sleep aid enemies, Ambien, Restorlin, Lunastaff, and Xanax. Friendly subs, Fabskniff, Melatonin Ultra, or three to six mill milligrams before bed. Artificial sweeteners kill good bacteria and start overgrowth of bad ones. A single pack of Splenda kills 50% of intestinal flora. They are supposed to aid in weight loss, but instead do the opposite. Stay clear. Your taste buds taste sugar, but your gut feels cheated when they don't get the sugar fix from the sugar and goes on a rampage to get more of it. We are feeding ourselves what we consume, but we also feed the bugs inside us that help us. It is true that 99% of us is non-human. Without a normal amount of bugs in our immune system, it wouldn't develop properly. 
even during birth, if you didn't journey down the birth canal, you might not have a normal amount of microbes. Taking meds can damage the stomach lining, wearing down the mucus in your gut. The more mucus you produce, the more resistant you are to lectins. So, that's very interesting. Remember, swallowing NSAIDs is really bad for your mucus gut lining. The nerves coming from your brain to your gut communicates various orders to other organs. Lectins can reach your brain that in the same way since they are more neurons, neurons in your gut than there is in your entire spinal cord. When you have a gut instinct, you are absolutely right. We feel a lot of our emotions in our gut. We will be happier if our gut is happy. Feed the food bugs in your body and you will thrive. Deadly disruptors can also be personal care products. Household cleaners, containers, you held in your food and your drink. We have become dependent on these negative alterations which seem to improve our health but are actually making us sicker. What we eat today in our world is different to what our grandparents ate. Hybrid plants haven't had years to adapt to the changes of their surroundings, environment, bugs, weeds. So farmers rely on heavy biocides um, and lectins that are artificially injected. Some lectins have also health benefits. Lectins in garlic, bitter, melon, and other herbs containing healing properties. Some are investigating how they can treat cancer because they bind to cell membranes. Nonetheless, if you're sensitive and the cause of inflammation likely affects the benefits for its anti-cancer. Some food in certain quantities is good for us. Little bits of lectins can elongate the lifespan. <laughs> Remember this. The more bitter, the more better. By eating sugar or fruit year round, you throw off your ancient rhythmic clock, which is one of the key factors in weight gain. It's not just foods that have been messing with us our whole lives. Hormone disruptors have chemicals, estrogen agents, found in more plastic scented cosmetics, preservatives and sunscreens, other diverse items like cash register, register receipts along with DDE, DDT or PCBS, all that regularly play with your hormones. This is all in scientific proof. Exposure to these can affect you with these problems, diseases, reproductive problems, male or female, woman hormone sensitive, sensitive cancers, prostate problems, thyroid problems, impaired development. BHT. BHT is one in which it's found in processed foods, whole grain products to prevent spoilage. It is also found in lightweight plastic water bottles, baby teething rings, and most of the canned goods that, that have the thin plastic linings. Parabens and cosmetic sunscreens serve a similar purpose. Methyl paraben, an estrogen compound which is also a major allergen used to preserve most drug solutions in multi-use containers. Recent research shows that TBHQ may be responsible for the increase of food allergies, food and numerous processed foods, including bread, waffles, crackers, and other baked goods. Also nuts and cooking oil. The presence of TBHQ doesn't need to be listed on the label. This compound stimulates the T cells, which are key to our immune system to release proteins that stimulate our aller allergic response to foods. Under the normal conditions, T cells release chitonics, <laughs> which pr protect the body from invaders. Antibacterial chemicals such as triclosan, found in hand sanitizers, soaps, deodorants, toothpaste, and countless others destroy good microbes in your, in your mouth, gut, skin. They also promote obesity by changing the gut flora. When you use mouthwash, good bacteria is killed. These bacteria actually dilate your blood vessels and promote normal blood pressure. Triclosan and hand sanitizer and toothpaste promotes bladder cancer. Sunscreen prevents the absorption of vitamin D, but all the compounds discussed above are also lower your liver's ability to convert vitamin D, preventing regeneration of new cells. I never mentioned it, but the lady that wrote this, wrote this book, she's a heart surgeon, and she's dedicated her whole life to learning about this. 
And one of the things she says is 80% of her patients have low levels of vitamin D. Estrogen's main purpose is to tell cells to start fat for upcoming pregnancy, where nowadays that switch is always turned on 365 days a year. Fun fact coming from a Canadian. We may be more up to date since BPA, a plastic compound, has been banned there. Patholates, DCHP, DEHP, and DNOP is a compound used to soften plastics used in wall coverings, gloves, trays to package meat, fish, plastic wrap, toys your animals play your children play with, uh, and animals, containers, perfumes, hairsprays, lubricants insect repellent, and thousands of other household products. Associated with endocrine disruptors in men's urine is associated with the damage of DNA and sperm. Being exposed at a young age can be associated with premature breast development in girls. Exposure in the umbilical cord shows the cause of premature birth. In Canada, again, they have it conducted how much they want this in their food supply. Arsenic found in chicken is also a poison and hormone disruptor. The more chicken a pregnant woman consumes, the smaller the baby boy's penis and attention span. It also impacts the sexual imprinting and gender identity. ADCA and ADA is an endocrine disruptor used to bleach flour in dough. It has been proven to provoke asthma and allergies as well as surprise immune and functions. Trojan horses. DHT is mostly found in baked goods. If it comes in a wrapper, then it's more likely. Teflon, brand name for DTFE, is used in non-stick cookware, stain-resistant fabrics, carpeting, or as well as PFOA. Uh, if I just wanted to mention a little clip I wanted to put in here on some of the information I have been talking about with household items and how they can be so dangerous to us. I want to show a clip right now of a movie called Dark Waters. That's Dark Waters with an S. It's a very good movie. Um, blew my mind. And I'm so happy that that movie is out there because it it's, it's fact. This all is really big facts of things. And we're wondering, like, we put so much into our healthcare and like, what's wrong with us and why do we get sick? Well, it the main problem is the food and the things we use every day. And I think that we need to be more aware and get that message out there. And I'm gonna show you a clip right here. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains. Hi, Grammar. What are you doing here? <laughs> Your grandma tells me her grandson's some fancy environment lawyer down in Cincinnati. I am a corporate defense attorney. So? I defend chemical companies. Well, now you can defend me. How many did you lose? 190. 190 cows. You tell me nothing's wrong here. It's a small matter for a family friend. Help a guy who needs it. The farmer or you? That's chemicals, I'm telling you. I'm seeing documents I don't understand. They're hiding something. That chemical. What if you drank it? Drank it? It's like saying, what if I swallowed a tire? What if whatever's killing those cows is in the drinking water? That's DuPont. Better living through chemistry. It's our DNA. You need to tell me what in the hell's going on. DuPont is knowingly poisoning 70,000 local residents for the last 40 years. You knew, still you did nothing. You want to flush your career down the toilet for some cow hand? You want to take everything that you know and turn it against an iconic American company like an informant. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Yes. They have all the money, all the firepower, and they'll use it. I know. I was one of them. Our government is captive to DuPont. They're trying to force you to make me stop. He was willing to risk his job, his family, for a stranger who needed his help. The system is rigged. 
They want us to think it'll protect us. We protect us. We do. I really recommend go and watch that movie if you're interested in what I'm seeing and become woke. Just wake up. The universe needs everyone to wake up and be, we're running out of time. We need more people out there that are gonna join the fucking rebellion. <laughs> the real problem is we're a bunch of ants. We were just a bunch of ants, two colonies in a jar, just not hurting each other or anything. And then here comes the government. They come and shake us all together and we're ripping each other apart, we're killing each other, but the real problem is the person that's shaking the jar. And that was my rant. I'm gonna keep going through and telling you a bit more about uh, some household products that are bad for you. Things like containers made with BPA, plastic, plastic wrap, plastic bags, sunscreen with parabens such as methanol paraben, avoid all sunscreens unless the active ingredient is titanium oxide, also scented products are a no-no. You can check the Environmental Working Group EWJ website for guides on sunscreen. Makeup with parabens is not only bad for your skin, but for you. Uh, you can look up on the website Since Skin Deep for more. Deodorants with parabens aluminum is on the EWJ website as well. Avoid all hand sanitizers with triclosan and all antibacterial soaps. Avoid toothpaste with triclosan or trilocarbon or sodium lauryl sulfite. It almost certain in most, and it's almost certain in most mouthwashes. You can also look at the website for that. Herbicides and insecticides and pesticides are different forms of biocides, herbicides that kill weeds. They produce poisons for bugs, but also what we eat, touch it and touch. And it's even in animal products. They unleash gigantic problems with us and can turn genes on and off within our cells. Genetically modified organisms or GMO were created inserting forum genes into plants with it making more insecticides or lectins. The roundup is not washed off the harvest and it remains on the grains, beans and feed it to all our livestock, almost all of them. Try pot pen and Pen Leon Leonine making serotonin and it's essential for thyroid hormone production. But GMO foods or conventionally grown block our gut bacteria are unable to produce essential amino acids. Double whammy when it comes to eating animal products and it's non-GMO foods. This is bad. Glyposate in whole grains, soy beans, and beans poison your own production of serotonin and tricin. Trison. Trison. I said that right the first time. It paralyzes the shikmate pathway that hinders our supply of amino acids and kills good gut bacteria. Even if you stop eating gluten, beans, soy, that has been sprayed into our bodies and already made a defense mechanism against, it, will, it may lose the defense. Becoming gluten sensitive also round up bounds with gluten, not making an immune response. Sorry if I'm just throwing like frisbees at your head with all these facts, but um, this is just how I wrote my notes. I'm really sorry. Roundup also paralyzes key liver enzymes that convert vitamin D, which means it can raise your cholesterol. Vitamin D repairs damage on your gut wall. The EPA is working on banning the chemical Roundup and the FDA would start testing foods in the early 2000s and 16s. They're linking it to the various chronic illnesses. Friendly substitutes to round up. White vinegar with a cup of salt and a teaspoon of liquid dish soap. You can almost substitute lemon from vinegar and Epsom salt in, instead of sea, uh, instead of salt if needed. <laughs> Enemy GMO foods, substitute organic foods. Stay away from products with these labels the coded messages with these translations. All vegetable feed, which really means contains grains, pedosu grains, or, or soy, or likely GMO, often found on poultry products. Free range, what this means. 
According to 2007 federal law, chickens labeled free range or free caged can be crammed inside a warehouse and fed corn and soy beans as long as their door to the small patch of grass is left open for at least five minutes of the day. Of course, under crowded conditions, most chickens never see the light of day. That's very sad. <laughs> That's one of the reasons I went vegetarian. Um, it's just like the environments they are kept in is just so inhumane. Gluten-free. What it really means, more sugar and lectins than the gluten-containing product is replaced. All natural, what that really means. So are hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes and arsenic. This is a meaningless term as neither of the FDA or the USDA has defined it. No cholesterol what this really means. The fats that replace cholesterol are actually full of fat omega-6 fats in this product, particularly hydronated, what it means. There are really bad omega-6 fats in here. No artificial ingredients, what this means. There is no nothing artificial in rat droppings, but at best, this is meaningless. Heart healthy, what this really means. Big food and big pharma. They want you to eat this, and by the way, one product certified as heart healthy by the next page, FDA, is Fruit Loops. Uh, however, avocados, salmon, nuts don't pass mustard by the FD don't pass mustard by the FDA. All organic ingredients. What this means? Buyers beware. Arsenic is organic and is legal to feed to its so-called organic chickens. It is a major antibiotic and an endocrine disruptor. Uh, GMO crops, if raised organically, also can be labeled organic. Wow. Off to the next subject. Exposure to blue light, long days, and short nights. Stimulate your body to eat as much food as possible. Short days and long nights stimulate you to seek less food. We are dominated by blue light, creating an unnatural non-stop exposure to the wavelength. Television, cell phones, tablets, electronic devices, which also interferes with sleep. It surpasses the production of melatonin and the hormone sleep deprivation is associated with obesity. Blue lights also stimulate garlin and cartsol, which are hunger and awake hormones. Since our programming associates blue light with daytime, it tricks our body into thinking we're in summer. So for this, minimize your exposure to blue lights in the evening by using a night shift mode on your iPhone. You can replace the bulbs in your bedroom with a blue light blocking bulb at, you can get this at Good night, biological LED lamp lighting science. If you understand what that means, then creeds to you. Here are some more truth bombs to throw at you, and they are stinky. 99% of diets are useless in the long run. Studies show that exercise doesn't make you lose weight. It makes you hungry. Others say it, that they don't tend to stick with it. Beans and grains promote greater fat storage, also milk products. All milk contains insulin like growth hormones and promotes inflammation. Poop from a fat person makes you fat. Poop from a skinny person makes you skinny due to the organisms. I hope that makes sense to you. It doesn't really make sense to me. I don't know why I wrote that down. We were stronger back before beans and grains. Uh, WGA facts. Number one, WGA locks on for good into a fat cell membrane and instructs it to make fat from sugar. Number two, WGA attaches to the muscle cell. It also locks on for good. The muscle can't get glucose whitening on the fat cell where it pumps sugar. Insulin mimicry is the true cause of muscle wasting as we age from lectins. Number three, when WGA lectins lock onto the insulin receptors in the nerve cells and neurons, they block the entrance of the sugar as well, making the hungry brain demand more calories. More WGA and other lectins bind in the brain and nerves, causing brain cells and prepernal nerves to die, resulting in dementia, Parkinson's, and prepernal neuropathy. Back time! The more lectins you eat from grains and beans, the hungrier you are. You are insulin and leptin resistant because your body is saving calories and making you hungry 
for war efforts. Almost all diets and weight loss stories all come from cutting lectins from your diet. Just let that simmer a little bit. Let that simmer in your brain. <laughs> Eating significant amount of protein or red meats trigger aging and cancer. Tr tumors seem to be made from what we eat, thus we don't make it naturally. Cells just want to live off us, make offspring, and don't care if the next cell replaces us after that point. Resistant starches pass through your gut without absorbing the calories as sugar. They also make good bacteria in your gut and make fatty acids, making you feel full longer, boost fat burning, and reduce fat storage. What you aren't eating is much more important than what you are eating. Give your gut bugs what they want and nobody gets hurt. That's just what I wrote down. <laughs> Fruit may as well be candy and shouldn't be attainable 12 months a year. Anything with seeds is fruit. There are three fruits you can eat. Unripe banana, mangoes, and papayas. All unripe. Reminder, you are the thing that you are eating eight. All corn produce, corn syrup is no good. Almost all 93% of restaurants feed their animals corn. Toxins that grow on corn are fed to livestock and fed to us leading to cancer. Now that we've got that, all that information just shoved right into your brain, just, okay. Here's the plant paradox program you guys are probably wondering about. Phase one, it starts by repairing your gut, fortifying the good microbes and banishing most of the bad microbes with this three day cleanse. So I'll write this all right here. You can screenshot it. Uh, this is the no, no list. No dairy, grains, piso grains, fruit, e sugar, eggs, soy, nightshade plants, roots, t tubers, no corn, soy, canola, canola, no farm or animal meat. No more than eight ounces of wild caught fish or chicken a day, size of a deck of cards. Should eat whole ass avocados every day. <laughs> I was so happy about that fact that I just had to say whole ass ones because I love eating avocados. They're so good. I'm so happy they're on that good list. Only use avocado oil, coconut, macadamia, sesame, walnut, extra virgin, hemp, flaxseed, and thrive oil. Have romaine lettuce with guacamole or avocado with lemon juice. Condiments, lemon juice, mustard, fresh black pepper, sea salt, herbs and spices. Avoid commercial salad dressing. Have a green smoothie every morning. I've been trying to do that. <laughs> um, drink eight cups of water. Also lots of herbal tea. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Get eight hours of sleep, exercise in moderation. All vegetables should be organic. No, um, sorry. Uh, extra virgin olive oil should never be exposed to high heat. Hemp and flax seeds should also never be heated. If you suffer from gut issues, consider certain natural things to clean it. I don't know much about that. Phase two. <laughs> Two weeks, you will feel and see a change. After six, you will ingrain these eating habits. There isn't. Here is the overview. Emil eliminate grains, legumes, corn, soybeans, GMO foods, crops treated with Roundup, and many saturated fats. Eliminate all sugars, artificial sweeteners, minimize omega-6 fats. Eliminate industrial, farm-raised poultry, dairy products, all farm-raised fish. You may have a small serving of nuts, guacamole, uh, or avocado as a snack. Avoid all endocrine disruptor products. Consume all leafy greens and certain vegetables and su substantial amounts of tubers. Yeah. And other foods that contain resistant starch. Boot the fruit, later bring it back in season as candy. Consume more omega-3 fats, fish oil, parallel oil, flaxseed oil, and others. Consume more than, no more than eight ounces of animal protein a day. Only four ounces of dairy products should be come from grass-fed pasture-raised meat. 
consume dairy products only from certain breeds of cows or from sheep, goats, and water buffalo, but still limit dairy products. Phase three, reduce intake of all animal protein, including fish, two to four ounces a day. Under the Plant Paradox program, patients can be resolved of these problems. Screenshot that if you like, but it's pretty crazy. I might even write it down below, but I'm not sure yet. Fact time! We're off that, so we're gonna go back into the facts. Pressure cookers will destroy lectins in beans. Most Americans consume more protein than they need. People only need 0.37 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Divide your weight by the pounds by 2.2 to get it in kilograms and then multiply the number by 0 0.37 to, to get the required daily grams of protein. We do not need each type of protein in every serving of food. Our bodies recycle amino acids on its own. Our protein needs are small compared to how much these are in other foods, not just in meat. It's true, have you ever seen a silverback gorilla? Or a giraffe? Or... A panda? They all eat just grass and their buff is shit. Uh, you might know this. You replace 90% of your old cells within three months, no matter what age. Our bodies have become beneficial building a relationship with the same lectins over thousands of years. Beans, peas, soybeans, lectin kings like ricin. It's like a poison and 20% of our food poisoning is from uncooked beans. Being lactose intolerant is being sensitive to lectins in milk. Fermation kills 98% of lectins, like a pressure cooker, but this won't work for gluten-containing grains. The oils in the no food eating page should be avoided at all costs. Yeah, so down below in that little no avoid all foods, the oils, avoid those. Here a lot oil is a good replacement or liquid or coconut oil or cod liver oil. Saturated fats increase hunger as fish oil does the opposite. Eat lots of FOS. <laughs> I had like these really long like scientific words for like what they mean, but I just put the short term name so you should be able to Google it. Consume leafy greens. When you juice fruits, toss the juice and just use the pulp. Consume lemon juice and vinegar. Have a fish capsule before each meal, eat figs, fasting. If it is too extreme, try fasting to 500 to 600 calories a day twice a week, then try eating normally for the rest of the week. Advice to fast Monday and Thursday. The longer you go without meals, the better your metabolic flexibility increases. If your insulin is high, that's a sign that says to chow down for winter. Cut out protein and sugar for less insulin. We are low on ketones, but luckily there are some plants out there that you can drink that make them. MCT oil, solid coconut oil, red palm oil, or biorite bi bi oil. You can have these ketones all day long, but if you're still eating animal protein, you will not break down the insulin to lose weight. Cancer loves sugar and protein. Proteins, carbs, and fruits are your enemies. Fat and ketones are your friends. Swallowing methyl folate, 100 grams each day, and methyl B under your tongue, you can bypass mutation of diseases. G6, more importantly, supplements are polymenthes, green plant, photochemicals, prebiotics, lectin blockers, sugar defense, long chain omega-3s. People that, people that have more omega-3s have a bigger brain and a better memory. Okay, so that's basically the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I really hope you put this into consideration and start, stop thinking about trying to get skinny and maybe just start trying to get healthy. Uh, this could help you in the long run. I can't really judge though because I haven't done it yet. I'm kind of waiting 
to go live out on my own and buy my own groceries and everything and I would definitely try it and see if I could do it and I think it would help with a lot of my mental states but um I also bought these online the help you digest your favorite foods without any like bad problems to your gut so it's called bio x4 or Nutrifix and it manages cravings, promotes weight management, boosts metabolism, and supports smoother digestion. And it's just got compact into these little tablets. I just take them right before my meals and they help me digest them better. And it's just supposed to be really good for your gut and your health. Even if right now I'm not doing the whole Plant Paradox program, this is what I'm doing right now, just to look out for my future self. I also took some things out of the book that I learned to take into my skincare routine or my bathroom routine that help um, keep me healthy. So I switched over to a crystal deodorant. And what you do is you just, it's just a crystal and you wet it under water and you put it under your armpits and you don't stink for the rest of the day. So it's pretty awesome. You still sweat, but it doesn't stink. But I like that. And sunscreen, I switched over sunscreen to a more natural one that was made of all natural products. Cause that is, it's very important to have sunscreen, but I just, I know I don't want something that's gonna be damaging my skin <laughs> in the long run. Um, Oh yeah, and I changed my toothpaste also to a natural toothpaste that doesn't have any, um, what's the word? I can't remember what it was called. But uh, yeah, I switched over to those and I'm hoping over time they slowly kind of help my body and everything like that and improve my overall health and my bacteria in my mouth. The good bacteria probably makes my breath not stink as much. Um, and yeah, and I, I'm a pescatarian, so I think that's what it's called. Uh, I don't eat meat, I only eat seafood, um, yeah, and I mostly do that for my own personal reasons of I don't like how they treat them in factories and stuff like that, so, uh, that would do a, a great number for your health, <laughs> I believe, lowers your amount of getting cancer in the future because they can form tumors. I know I can't explain it all in one, I can't grasp it all but if you really want to feel really inspired about this whole movement and everything go watch the movie dark waters dark waters with an s but yeah if you don't want to do that just feel free to watch this video as many times as you want and make notes and do the whole thing uh get a notebook just write it all down read the book read this book it's amazing it could save someone's life it could change your life it could change the world i really just want to just even if i could i'm just a small little person in this big world but I want to share my knowledge with the world and make a difference but yeah I'll see you in the next video hopefully it won't be so informative next time <laughs> bye